What's going on, guys? Welcome to Two Dudes, One Car. I'm Parker. I'm Alejandro. And uh, let's get into it. I Some cool news, actually. We are the most recommended podcast by the Soviet Union back in the 70s. It is true. Yeah. It is true. And you were saying dentists? How many dentists recommend? Oh, uh, 12 out of 10 dentists. 12 out of 10. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. the number just keeps growing. It's, it's crazy. pretty crazy. It's, it's pretty crazy. crazy. How are you? I, I'm good. The other day, we had the funniest... I don't even know what to call it, situation where I went from thinking it's a casual dinner at my buddy's house <laughs> it is. to the gnarliest MLM sales pitch I've ever experienced. And I questioned everything. <laughs> so we're hanging out and, and all of a sudden your wife was like, I've got this cool health thing and I'm, I'm about it. I need, to, I need to work on my health. Um, we all do. And she was talking about how everyone's different, obviously, their body, and, and you can use certain nutrients uh, and whatnot to, to help, like vitamin C and zinc all made sense to me. Yeah. Then she was like, oh, it's this program called 10X. And I was like, oh, my God, is that Grant Cardone 10X? And by the way, we were laughing because we had just come from the dealership where they were selling a 10X Grant Cardone uh, Rolls Royce Ghost. Right? The funniest part is I didn't know they were connected. I was like, Me what either. are the odds that they're both <laughs> called 10X? And uh, long story short, I got this like 45-minute pitch where I had to use a code, a di you know, a referral code, and Let me be now clear. we're MLM leaders. Let me be clear. That's not true. That's we happened. were just here. Balin was telling us everything about it. And then we looked into it while we were all together. And we were like, oh, my God. This is like a referral type of marketing program. Yeah, yeah. Thing Sergio goes, uh, it's an MLM. Yeah. <laughs> so he's just like, oh, did you guys know it was an MLM? And we are like... Wait, what? That means, by the way, for a lot of people that might not know what that means is, uh, you know, when you... Uh, it means it's a scam. <laughs> well, but, well, yeah. Multi-level multi -level marketing. Multi-level marketing. Yeah, yeah. Multi-level marketing. But what multi-level marketing means is a I'm sure you scheme. all have seen... Yeah, it's a pyramid scheme where someone comes in and he's like, hey, buy this air conditioner. And if you buy it, you're going to become a billionaire. You're like, how? Then you go to the meeting and there's like seven people like you. And there's someone pitching the seven people how to sell those air conditioners to other seven people so that that guy can make money. And then you make money when other people make money and whatnot. And so, that's what happened to me last Friday. I no, got he did not. He, invited, he goes, it, we're going to have some amazing steaks. There it, might be some. It some, did not. No, yeah. it did not. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, it's six hundred dollars. Oh, oh my god! You bought it, I not bought me. It. Holy <laughs> shit! You not I didn't use anyone's code. It's just we were watching Joe Rogan, and he's listen. I want to get myself to the most healthy place possible. Totally agree. Because it's totally crazy agree. what's going on out there. And my wife was like talking to us about it, and and it's I I always think I, I don't tell her anything because we can all talk about whatever we want in this house, right? But uh, uh. It's, it went, as she was telling you about it, I was like, it sounds like Belen is selling Parker on this. And then Sergio goes, oh, it's an MLM. And then we started like as a joke. Oh, yeah. Use code Belen so that you can, you can See, get See, it's happening product. again. No, if no, no. that's her code. No, there's no code. Now you're, there's no code. Now there's you're no code. promoting it on the There's podcast. no code. There's no code. There's no <laughs> okay, code. Okay. But use the link down below. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> so we, eventually yeah. we will talk about cars. We'll, I promise. We'll, no, no, we'll get to it. But yeah, we're just using it. Hopefully it'll work. And uh, I, we'll I'm, let you I know. am excited to see. Basically, I'm doing my research by letting you and your wife do the program. Yes. And then in, in a couple should. months, I'll figure out whether it was a scam or not. And by the way, you can buy it without using anyone's code okay. at that point when you see it works or it doesn't work. Yeah. But yeah. The and and, and this thing happened to me in another time. I was showing a friend of mine when I was getting into the Gorilla Watches thing. Yeah. I have briefcases full of Gorilla Watches, but like different ones. They're, it's my collection. So I, my friend that came from Mexico was like asking me, can you show me your watches? So I brought them out in my briefcases, like rolling briefcases, and I opened them up. And then he starts looking at him. He's with his girlfriend, and he looks at his girlfriend and goes, which one do you like? Which one do you want? And I go, whoa, 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 what do you mean? And he goes, aren't you selling these? I was like, wait a second. You think I'm selling you stuff in my own house? <laughs> and he goes, yeah. Why do you have these briefcases? I'm like, these are my watches, asshole. These are not for sale. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not the first time that's happened I mean, to me. you are the common denominator in both those <laughs> stories. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so moving forward, it's not really automotive, but it ties in. So I want to talk about what you think are the most common trends in the car world right now. And I think that it, it's like screens galore is one of them. You'd need to have the most screens and the biggest screens. And the Apple Vision Pro just came out. <laughs> and it feels to me like a screen on your eyes, but then you can put more, as many screens as you want in the screen. It's a bit like Pimp My Ride. Like, you want a screen in your screen? You, <laughs> you get a screen on your screen with yeah. a screen. <laughs> okay, so what is the trend? Like, what are the trends that yeah, we're yeah. seeing the most? Yeah, screens. Screens everywhere, son. Ambient lighting. There's, oh. I'm that's, a sucker for ambient I lighting, gotta say, I'm not going to lie. That's why I do like the Teslas. It's simple. You get your little screen in front of you, and then you get the massive screen in the middle, and that's it. But you get into a Mercedes, dude. Yeah. There's a the co-pilot whole screen. screen. There's a middle screen. There's a driver's screen. There's a back seat screen. Like, there's so many of them. But I think... That's why they have terrible range. That's why they have terrible range. Just eating the battery via screen. Because it's just you're just watching TV the whole time, and it's just consuming all of your energy. I mean, how much, uh, how many screens can you power it with one battery? That's how I picture... The ultimate car, if you fast forward with all the trends, is just like a cube. You're, you've got a screen on every surface and a couch in the middle. It's electric <laughs> and it drives itself. <laughs> <laughs> That's like from the Jetsons kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. I feel like That's that the most wally car and ambient lighting everywhere. I, I actually think this is my vision of the future going with this because I'm obsessed. Obsessed. I, I launched, uh, uh, people think I hide from this, but no, I launched a collection of NFTs. Then I had to rock pull other collection of NFTs. I loved it because I thought that was the future at some point. But what I've learned from it altogether is, uh, and where I fell in love with was like the possibilities of the metaverse. And then the metaverse as we know it is garbage. But then I saw that in China, the Apple Vision Pro, there's many of those already in the form of sunglasses. Really? People don't know this, but if you look up like the Xiaomi, I, I, I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. The Xiaomi AR glasses. Look this up. All of that crap already exists. And you can do it on shit that looks like sunglasses. Where you get on that, the plane. See, that's the future. That's, that's what I'm saying. When it doesn't look ridiculous where, where you're not walking outside and it, yeah yeah because right now i have the meta the the meta ray-bans yeah right? and those are super chill I, those are sick yeah no one knows that you have them on 100%. i don't have to pull out my phone i can record i can ask questions yeah that yeah. is less device oriented and more human stuff if you will like what sure. you get back so from all of that stupid research and story that i'm telling you i think the future is highly involving AR, augmented reality. And I think cars will actually have zero screens in the future and everything will be in your windshield. That would be cool. I because mean, especially with navigation and stuff, it makes all the sense in the world. Now think exactly, think about the uh, Apple Vision Pro, like how you go like this and with your hand and you're moving things, yeah, yeah. which by the way, looks ridiculous. But imagine being inside of your car. BMW kind of has that a little bit with the volume thing that you go like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then backwards and then you go like this. It looks like you're fingering a virtual person. And, but, and Mercedes has the AR turning of oh, the yeah. navigation. That's right. So I feel like AR will be everything towards the future. Like where yeah, you want to yeah. go, your maps, your, your location – all of your displays can be on your windshield and you don't have to have any of that clutter bullshit screens, which by the way, they're cool right now and they're kind of timeless at the moment. But at some point we're going to look at technology, screen technology, and that's going to look old as fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but the, that's the TVs. That's what I'm interested to see is with everything being screens, how outdated are cars going to look in 10, 20 years? Because if you look at any car that had a screen from the 90s with little font on it, it looks ridiculous. Yeah. And it's probably going to look ridiculous in the future. Oh, in three years, by the yeah. way. You don't have to go that far. Yeah. Three years, he's going to be like, what were we thinking? <laughs> this looks terrible. But I think there's a saving grace. Like if you look at the Chiron, yeah. Uh, the Bugatti Chiron, it's got nothing on it. Yeah, and they did that with the Veyron too to make it future-proof. And you sit inside those cars right now and you're like, thank you. Yeah. This is awesome. 
You sit inside of a Pagani, even though it's got that middle screen, which the middle screen can be turned into anything. You're like, this is awesome. This is like a watch that I bought, and it's all of that. Some intricate. of the graphics are like a Game Boy Advance in the Pagani. Oh, well, well, hang on, hang on. I'm not, I'm not applauding Pagani on their shit screen. Yeah. I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying, but it's minimal. It's minimal, and they can upgrade that screen anytime they want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's just one. But these cars, like the Mercedes, like you're saying, that they have three fucking screens. It's a dude. screen with wheels on it. Yeah. They look ridiculous. And it's going to get not that far away because now we also have holograms. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big hologram fan too. Yeah, pretty so you cool. Have, you have hologram, you have AR, like augmented reality, and you have VR. You can combine anything into the in front of you while you're driving. You're not going to need the screens, the physical screens. And especially when you can see what the Vision Pro can do with the graphics, like how realistic it looks and how you can put them in, in places and whatnot, you're going to, I need to try one on. Have you, have you seen one yet in person? I've, I haven't used it. No, no, no. I, 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 Oh man. Can I tell you something? I love my, my Ray-Bans, uh -huh. the meta ones, because no one can tell I'm wearing them. Yeah. No, no one can yeah, tell. Yeah. What it's they the opposite are. of that. And I yeah. think as cool, if you got infinite money to blow, might as well just get it, whatever. But I think the Apple vision pro is like the, entry to something crazy like a couple generations in yes, it's going to be cheaper thinner <clears throat> 10 times more utilization my problem right now is with cars and and uh, uh with anything that i want to use it with it looks stupid it's, yeah I know it, it it's looks gonna, ridiculous i know it's going to get way better i know that most people that are buying one want to get the views and the likes and i all think that it's stuff. the it's the uh it's like a cyber truck it is it's it like is. the Apple Vision Pro and the Cybertruck. Don't fucking compare. Are I have a pretty Cybertruck similar. tattoo right here, motherfucker. It's different. They look ridiculous. <laughs> they're cutting edge. And they're expensive. Oh, man. I, 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 I would and they got to, a lot of screens. No, no, no. I would have to. <laughs> yes, I would have to agree with you. I just think in the future, that's going to become less. And it's just going to go towards AR. And at some point, it's all going to be in your head with the... Yeah. Neuralink type of things that they're going to be. That'll be scary. Yeah, and yeah. Awesome and scary. Yeah, at the same time. But the meta Ray-Bans are doing it the best. Because if you can get something to that size that shows you, like, when you're walking, where navigation is. Yeah, yeah. Where, where to go. 100%. Uh, what the best restaurants. Like, a list of things that you need while you're building something. Because you can tell the, the meta ones, hey, hey, meta, look at this. And then it'll look. And it's like looking at your faucet. How do I fix it? It'll tell you. Like now imagine it actually shows you like piece by piece everything. You don't need more than that. I feel like the the Vision Pro is awesome, but they it needs to get to the Chinese level of like right here. And I feel like for cars, it's all going to be on our windshields. Yeah. That's the secret to it all. And then on your mirror, something will come out that looks at your eyes or in front of you at the steering wheel, wherever they put it. That will actually let you go through the menus and all that stuff so that it looks hyper-realistic but without being in the way. And it'll also allow for new apps to be created where, for example, a racing one. You can pretend to have uh, – you're driving a, a, a 765LT and you want to say race mode simulation with a Lamborghini Centenario. Uh, Centenario. And then you're going to put it and you're going to be able to see the Centenario in your windows – you're going to accelerate, be able to run, and you're going to feel like that car is right there, but he's not, it's not right there. I think that's the future of where everything is going, but we're quite far still. That would it. be crazy, actually, if you had like your Ray-Bans and you could change the interior and complete view of your car. You know, you could have like an entry-level car and then the steering wheel is where it is, but everything's just radically changed in an AR and so you feel like you're in a centenario without the sound. And, and the by the way, I mean, you can do it with the sound and everything when you have like shit that covers you here. And also on the meta ones, you have a sound coming out of them. So I just have my sunglasses on and I'm watching videos. No one knows, but I'm listening to stuff too. And I feel like that could be not that far and, and not so removed from what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I think that's more of a reality of what we're going to look at. Our houses, and this is something that I, that I completely believe in that people are not anymore going to spend so much money on crazy shit for their house, but rather than digital stuff. Sure. That like you're saying, <clears throat> I can see the interior of my car being upgraded 
What if you walk into your house and you have like a sick Picasso painting that's not there so that safety wise, yeah, no one's going to come in and break it and, and steal it from you. You can have like a crazy car that doesn't exist that's right there. You know what I mean? Like it's all like a, a, a new way of own of owning stuff that you would never own in a safer way. Sure. But it's also... I think part of it, though, is also making people lazy and I feel like destroying the world. Like if you could just if the Apple Vision Pro was perfect and it could do everything, why do you leave your couch? You well, just you got everything and then you don't need to make a bunch of money because you've got your fake NFT Picassos my, on the walls and your your virtual hyper cars. And that's my it's personal a little, problem. It's with interesting. It. That's my personal problem with it, because I ran for a long time with a minimal lifestyle. You don't need to make that much money. I was forever stuck in the. Let's make money. Let's kill it. Let's whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I left it for a while, but I do feel like there still needs to be that part inside of all of us. We 100%. really want to get more. And maybe it's not more money to get more stuff, but we need to do better. And that ambition needs to be thriving somehow. And how the fuck is that going to thrive in people's bodies when it's not like tangible, when you can't touch it, when you can't just like do better and then get a LaFerrari, do better and yeah, get yeah. a McLaren F1. I wonder on the on the flip side of that, if it makes it better for the people who are motivated. So all the people who don't care or whatever, get everything digital, they can do nothing, they can chill out and yeah. it destroys half the population. But yeah. then all of the people who are like, no, nah, no, nah, I got to push and like do real things and, and have well, tangible you can do so real much experiences. More. It really helps. It really like helps. I'd rather people. see Machu Picchu in real life than, you know, put it on my VR headset. I just think those are different things, but I also agree because I, I have a friend. Uh, <laughs> this fucking guy is loaded, loaded, like mega loaded. But his family comes from like all of the money. He's a part of it. He works his ass off, mm -hmm. right? But he always tells me when I tell him, oh, dude, I wish I could go to Italy and be in like the warm waters of La Dispoli or whatever. He goes, I just Googled it. I looked up the location. I walked through all of La Dispoli. I've already been there. I don't need to fucking go. Thank you. You save. I'll save my plane <laughs> ticket money. And in a way, he's right. He's seen it. He saw I the guess. same shit I did. But I was there. Yeah, it's different. So the is it? I think so. I think so too. But to that dude, he feels complete. He already did then it. That's, He's got that's the money. fantastic. Yeah. So now it's going to be like an open future as to like what we consider to be important personally rather than collectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know where that's going to take us because we need to keep pushing. I feel like the mainstream narrative of everything is pushing towards become a useless piece of shit. Yeah, it's, it is what it your, feels like, genuinely. And have your Apple Vision Pro yeah. on, which again, I'm not against, and I'm not saying that everyone that's wearing one is a fucking lazy piece of shit, but it feels like everyone's like, dude, just stay in your house with your with that thing on and then just shut the fuck up and stay there and be happy. And everyone's like, cool, I can be. So I went from one opposite, which is, I need to make more money. I don't know why I need it more and blah, blah, blah. To like, I don't need to make any more money. I don't care for it. To now finding myself in the middle of it. Sure. And now I feel like I can be happier just planning ahead. But at the same time, my ambition needs to be there. Without, without my ambition, I'm not myself. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I can relate like to that. Like, it's a big part of me. 100%. Like, I want more. I want the desire of building, creating, uh, going through more goals. Sure, going sure. Going through more, uh, uh, yeah, finish lines. All right, so speaking of creating, and I'll, I'll go first, and, and you can give me your input after. I'm curious what your favorite automotive channels are. So, okay. I, I'm going to exclude... My friends from this, like, oh, shout no. out to... Oh, no. I was going to leave. Okay, how about you You leave them in no, on your no, end. No, 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 so I'm gonna say, I'm not going like to say yours. you. I'm not going to say Shmi or, or, or Street Paul, Speed or Paul or, or yeah. Archie or any of those people. Uh, the reality is I feel like I spend so much time prepping for videos, filming videos, editing videos that I don't spend a ton of time actually watching automotive YouTube. But currently, and I'm going to do... This is like my 2024, what I watch. Yeah. I forget if it's auto addition or auto addiction, and it's just cars crashing on the Nurburgring. I've seen and that. And it's my, it's my favorite. Oh, 
<laughs> it's so it's good. Like, it's just, I don't know why. I mean, seeing cars go fast around the Nurburgring is amazing, but then also seeing the crashes, it's like, it's pretty, it, it's pretty entertaining. It is pretty special. It's good background noise. Uh, whatever. Yeah. I like car wow. I like the drag races. I think yeah. that's, uh, they, by the way, they monopolize the fuck out of that, right? Yeah. 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 That, like Brooks, uh, from drag times. Was well, like, yeah, I'm gonna be the guy known for the drag races, and then Carwa was like, "Hang on, Bruce. I know, we, yeah, we actually have a drag strip, We're, and we actually have like apparently what seems to be an abandoned airport. Yeah, yeah, and, and we're gonna you. have an F1 car race. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of they, they're doing stuff that everyone wish, wishes they could do. Absolutely. And then I will say, I think Jason Camisa is killing it right now. He's he's been an awesome guy in the car world for a long time, but the production budget on the Haggerty videos. Is pretty ridiculous. I think Jason Camisa as a whole, as a person, was, and maybe not now. And I, by the way, don't think I watch a lot of car stuff right now. I randomly search certain things and then. Sure. But I, I don't have like, a, outside of our friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have a, a, wow, I'm watching this nonstop because everything is very much the same. But Jason Camisa got me into Tesla. He was the oh, first person to make the most important. I, I think he made the most important video on Tesla ever, 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 ever with the Model S. Interesting. And, and from there, I, I instantly became a fan of the dude. Like when I saw that video and I became a fan of Tesla because of that video that he made. And I just feel like for some reason, no one appreciates the shit out of that dude like they should. I don't know why. And again, I'm not saying I watch all of his stuff and whatnot, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the most important videos I remember in my life, that dude was there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Kind of like a Top Gear and like Fifth Gear with Tiff Nadell yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. I feel like that was that. Aside from that, what other car creators do I watch? I mean, it's a little bit of what you said, the car wild thing. I just want to know sometimes like what cars is faster yeah. on a straight line. 100%. That's all I need to know. No one's doing... Is anyone, yeah, Motor Train was doing the track thing where kind of like I did in Hyper 5 and all yeah, that yeah, stuff, Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, but not to, not every single car. And also, can I tell you this? We got a you guest can, appearance. You cannot, oh, thank you. You cannot trust, thank you, Sergio. You cannot trust Motor Trend or anyone with any real information. That's the, that's the interesting thing, too, is you don't I, know if somebody wrote a checkbook, wrote a big check. That's why I started faster. doing cars because I realized fast the cars that I was buying were not what they were telling me everywhere. And then, by the way, the car magazines had a great cop out, which was they're giving us cars that are different from the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're not. They're giving you money, you fucking piece of <laughs> shit. How about well, that? Well, sometimes there have been, I don't want to call any car manufacturers out, but there have been certain manufacturers. We know which ones. Yeah, yeah, that, that provide press cars that are a little bit faster than their uh, than their street cars, yeah. uh, and they show up and they make sure it's it's perfectly mm. prepared. But I think, and that's why we kept it like neutral and yeah, like yeah. third party, and we didn't want to touch any of that. That would be amazing. That would be the dream. I think is what? if for whoever is watching, for the three people that are watching, if we could have a there's three people watching. There this? could be four now. I'm gonna go spend some money right now. Heck yeah. I didn't know it was that many. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's go lease. Holy shit. Let's go lease some hypercars. <laughs> um, if you could have your own test track and put every single car up against each other and create a leaderboard for the fastest track times, that would be the well, coolest thing what, ever. That, that's what we were doing. Yeah. That's what we were doing. Unfortunately, I started with a bunch of retards, but uh, I think that's not that hard to do. I'm going to be honest with you and open. Yeah. I'm talking to a bunch of friends in Mexico that make movies. Mm -hmm that have access to money from the government to make uh, content. Yeah. And I personally feel like a Top Gear-like show in Spanish, well done with murder. But the coolest thing about it is I'm going to shoot it in Spanish and in English. So we should do that. I'm super down. I was going to say, can't participate in the Spanish version unless you've got some serious... We should do that. Some serious CGI. AI. No, no, yeah. no. AI. Yeah, AI, AI can do it, but I want because that that's uh, one thing I was arguing with a friend last night. Uh, <laughs> he's like, "I'm about to give you three million dollars. You want to bring two crews and shoot the same thing twice?" Why don't you? <laughs> he goes, "He goes, why don't you just do it in once and we use AI to translate everything?" I'm like, "It's not the same. Yeah, we yeah, want it's definitely the different not the same. People and also, it takes no time whatsoever 
to do the dialogue. Yeah. None. I do, I do this all the time. Like my videos are Spanish and English at the same time. Uh, so I'm yearning for that again. I, I think I that like, would be an unbiased. I don't. I mean, it might piss a lot of manufacturers off, but then it does. you could just you could just get the cars from owners. I think yeah. that's the move yeah. because if so and so provides you with the car, they're all going to freak out. They're not going to want them tested against each other. Yeah. So you just get literally every modern car and put them on the track with the same driver. That's what. And that's literally what I used to do. And that's, I feel like, gotten easier now that it's been accepted that yeah. this is a real thing. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. when I used to do those videos, people were like, how are you going to make any money with this? Now they're like, I understand how you're going to make money of this. Sure. So uh, just getting back to close your question, who am I watching? Every now and then when I see top uh, Chris Harris driving something. Yeah, yeah, big time. That's a must. I need to click on it. Car Wow is an easy one. Uh, because of the drag races. And outside of that, dude, I don't really watch that much car content outside of our circle. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, that's five total between I had three, you had two. That's pretty. I don't, yeah. Little I top just, five list in no particular order. I don't trust order. anyone. I know Motor Trend is sold as fuck. Like, and not, not, I'm, I'm not calling out Motor Trend. Blah, blah, blah. It's just like, you got to know if you get money from advertisers. And your life depends on getting these cars. If a manufacturer says, if you show this about my car, I will never give you another car. That, that is the, the crazy part about car reviews. Yeah. Is that there's so many political factors. So you get cars like you, you get a car from Maserati lately. Yeah. I don't get cars from manufacturers for that reason. And, and it's not because they don't want to loan them to me, which I guarantee you they wouldn't. But uh, it's because of that. I want to be able to tell the truth. Yeah. And I rather like, for example, right now I, I'm, I'm, I'm very tempted and not tempted. We're going to do it to test all of the electric cars from Mercedes. I'm going to go see Yvonne. We're going to give her big kisses and all that stuff, but you can bet your tits. We're not touching any of her cars. Because I want to know why no one's buying those cars. I want to like know. Like the EQS? And, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. all those things. I mean, they're ugly. And I want to be. That too. And I want to be able to say it. Because if I go, like right now, there's a manufacturer. Like, let's just say I spent a million dollars on cars right now. Yeah. On, on a dealership. That dealership called me and said, you can't spend, you, you can't come here and drive our cars because it's bad for us and manufacturers. It's like, okay. So the money clearly has to be taken away from the equation, yeah. which I totally understand. I don't want to cause any trouble for anyone. I want to be as honest as, as I want to be. And I want to be able to tell people what the fuck is hot, what's not. Because I, when I bought my Pagani, I wish I would have known what the Pagani was. Because I would have bought, and I would have gotten that Pagani in a different situation, not in the one that I did. Huh. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And that, and that really like st stuck to me. I want to make sure that I'm getting the car that I want and not the car that they're telling me that there it is. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I feel like that's important for 100%. people to know. Whether, probably not, and again, it's a little diverting towards why you created your channel, which is you want everybody to know what the right car is to get. Yeah. I want to be more specific. I want to let you know you're going to spend $2 million on something. I've already fallen for it. Do not spend $2 million on that. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get way more, way much more joy out of spending $2 million in this thing than in this one. And that that's why I did the five things I hate about series. Is which is phenomenal. Certain issues with, every single car yeah and if those five or so issues one of those is a absolute no-go for you then because everyone is afraid to lose their relationship with the manufacturer they're not going to say that stuff and then you might end up buying a car you don't actually want and that's what's fucked up yeah. i don't care about the relationship with the manufacturer i just care about ending up with a car that you don't want yeah and then yeah. eating the fucking depreciation the taxes the everything because i think that's important and for some and by the way it's it's also you're catering to an we're catering to an audience that can buy anything, and for some reason I thought like because this is where I'm coming from. I made my money so that I can do whatever the fuck I want. I didn't make my money to like bow down to any fucking idiot that tells me what to do and what to say yeah, and yeah. what to anything. So it's a little bit of an ego thing, but at the same time as a customer. 
I made my money so that I can buy what I want, mm -hmm. not what they're telling me. And when I buy something that I don't find to be spectacular and I want to say something, I can say it because I spent $2 million on it. Yeah, yeah. And I hate that these companies have such a grasp on on people and on reviewers. And so on did you did you say negative things about your Pagani? I did. I mean, the car didn't work for a long time. And that didn't affect anything and, and, with and, your and, and Pagani the relationship? Way, they told me. So I did. I had a rocky relationship with Horatio for a long time. And then it turned out to be good because Horatio is the man. And he's older and he's lived more than me. And I didn't know how to act. Yeah, yeah. Because when I made Hyper 5, I called Horatio and I said, dude, I want you to come over. And I want you to give me the best setup for the car so that we can use it in Hyper 5. Like, mm -hmm. just tell me that. And he just gave me a, ha <laughs> good luck. Like, he didn't think I was going to do what I did. Yeah, yeah. Which most people didn't. But I bought your car and I made that money making movies. So mm -hmm. what the fuck do you expect was yeah, going to happen? Yeah, a little interesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? And with, with Ferrari, I noticed right away, they're never going to help me. I need to get it outside yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. So I made the video. And when I made the video, Motor Trend and fucking Car and Driver and everyone told me the Pagani Wyra was faster than all of these other cars. Huh. And it wasn't. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that it would be. But now, motherfucker. But back then, everybody was like, no way, the Pagani. Like the Koenigsegg thing. Why do you never see Koenigseggs on a racetrack racing other cars against time? Why? Well, they they were trying to set a Nurburgring record, and they had a really bad crash. Oh, was that only one crash? And they never tried again because they had a really bad crash. Well, the bummer, the it's it's a bummer with the crash thing. Cody Obviously, is the epitome of what I'm saying. I hope you know. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. I get it. it. It bums me out because like McLaren has decided that they don't. I, and maybe this is old information. Maybe they'll bring back times. But from what I've seen, they've basically decided that they don't want the PR of. The, and I get it, the lead driver going around the Nürburgring dying, and so they're not posting Nürburgring not times anymore. Not true. What do, you, what do you think it is? Not true. They're doing it because in real life, like the best example is the iconic segment. Why are you, forget about the, the, the ring. The ring is iconic. The ring is like mega. Yeah, all, yeah. All, all that shit. Why are they <laughs> not grabbing? I'm, I'm Koenigsegg. I make the fastest car in the world. I am Christian von Koenigsegg. I create things called dark matter. Like, that's fucking crazy, homie. You have the balls to create something that no one understands in the universe? Yeah. Cool. And he's making insane technology. Don't get me wrong. I think Christian's a genius. And this is a problem that he has with me. I think he's a genius. I think he creates stuff that it's unbelievable. Now, however, his business model is fucked. Because why the fuck are you not growing those things that you're putting into, like, the dark matter? Why is there no dark matter 2? Why is there no dark matter 3? Why is there no, no, um, what's the one, the, the Regera? Koenigsegg Regera? Yeah. Why is there no that transmission going into another car part 2? Because everything is so different, right? That one is interesting because I, I, I've heard him talk about the Regera transmission being for their GT car, more of a cruiser and less of a track focused thing. So the Yesco is their super track focused car. Maybe the new version of the Regera will have a, a single gear. If they don't, then I totally agree with what you're saying. But he hasn't done Why it so have far? these one off technologies to not But he hasn't done it so far. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's you agree with me. Yeah, yeah. So the problem with that is he's going against the Porsche philosophy of I'm gonna grab this knife and just sharpen it yeah, yeah, yeah. through the years so that it can be the sharpest fucking knife anyone can take into a piece of meat and cut anything. And that has repercussions. I understand the coolness. And by the way, this is not a negative. I legitimately because that's what really gets a car going, right? Into yeah, yeah. Uh, into the stratosphere of a classic because when you're a 12-year-old and you have that car on your wall, that in the future, that becomes a classic. Sure. So Koenigsegg uh, has backed away from every chance they get at putting a car on the track, from every excuse possible. Am I right or not? Whether, yeah, whether, yeah. Whether I, the excuse is justified or not. I Am agree. I right or not? 100%. Okay. This is just literally... Marketing 101, we're selling the fastest car in the world. Yet the fastest car in the world can beat a Tesla on a drag strip. Yet the fastest car in the world can beat a GT4 RS on a drag race. 
And you, you got to wonder why. Why can you do that? Why, why hasn't anyone seen that? And it's just these guys don't want to show that because the marketing on their car shows whatever. They have all of these mediums bought. They have all of these kids that they loan out cars to. Whether you do this or I'll never loan you the car, I don't give a fuck. You, you know what I mean? Like I wanted to know the truth and I wanted to show the truth to everyone because there are idiots like me who have just made money, who can just afford these cars and are getting tricked and played on into buying something that they're thinking it is something else that what it actually is. Yeah, yeah. And that's that that was my problem. So for example, with a Pagani example, dude, I'd buy a Pagani. Like right now, I'm dying to buy a one-off from Horatio, whatever. But you know what? That's gonna be when business A and business C get sold. I get whatever amount of money and I have an extra of this, this, and that, and I can have that car as my garage car that I'll maybe take it out once in whatever and it's just going to be my piece of conversation. Mm -hmm. That's when I'll buy a Pagani because that's when it's exciting and cool and awesome. But if I want it to be my car that I take out to Newport, that I take out to the fucking rally of whatever, it's never going to work. Never. It's just going to be frustrating as fuck. And that was my problem. They sold me on a really fast car. I had no problems, whatever. And I'm not saying Pagani. The, the magazines... And it, it was not that. And Koenigsegg is doing that every day, all day. And all of the brands are used to it. And especially after I backed down from their shit. Because after me, there was no one else that had the balls to go against the grain. Did you have problems with the car? Mechanical issues? With or? the Pagani? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Of yeah. course. See, that's, a, that's another thing that people don't talk about. Because they're in their tight-knit circle of... There's not that many people who have Paganis. There's not that many people who have Koenigseggs. Let's pretend they're perfect so that it can inflate the values of the car. When in reality, small manufacturers, they break down all the time. Yeah. Every small manufacturer that doesn't have the R&D budget of Volkswagen, Audi Group, you know, that's what the Chiron works. Yeah. The Veyrons work yeah. a lot um, yeah. because they've got a ridiculous backing and R&D budget. And that to me was a big lie that I found out uh, was a real truth that if I wanted to buy a Bugatti and I was buying a Bugatti and I was paying what a Pagani and my maintenance was high as fuck up front was because they're being honest. Like this, yeah. is, this works like this. Whereas in Pagani and again, Pagani is what it is and it's awesome and it's a piece of art and it's different and fucking kudos to them. And same thing with Koenigsegg, same shit. I, I don't have any bad like, oh, I have anger towards yeah, any mean, of these brands. Yeah, I mean, they're two of my favorite brands. No, no, no. They, for sure. They do what they're supposed to do. They're protecting themselves from all of this. But the problem is they have brainwashed, indeed, everyone into believing that anyone that says anything against the reality, which is not true, yeah. is fucking crazy or wants to badmouth them and whatever. So when I bought, I had my 918 and my Waira, I for sure thought I, I, I was going to have the 918 as a rite of passage getting the wire and never see it again. Mm -hmm. But when I got both at the same time, I was like, the 918 is clearly a way better car than the wire, but like by a monstrous amount. And people never understood that. Like I went and got a crazier spec on my 918 uh, instead of like, oh, let me focus on getting a higher end wire. Cause I, Horatio was kind enough to like offer me one of the first seven BCs. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want to buy a BC. I'd rather buy a fucking... It drives nice. 918. But, it's a, it drives nice and it's a nice car, but it's got all these fucking ridiculous things that I don't... Me, poor Alejandro, that doesn't have over $100 million in my bank account, yeah, yeah, should yeah. not have one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no, I think I everybody should know that. And everybody that's buying one and saying, oh, everything is great and uh, blah, 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 they're doing it so the value of the car races. Yeah, Whereas 100%. to me, it was like, I don't care if the value of my car goes up or down. I'm willing to talk about it. Just like when I fucking painted my, uh, my Courage GT. I painted my Courage GT and everybody called me a moron and a crazy person for painting history. Mm -hmm. Are they painting crazy cars right now, left and right, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. But back not, then, not aftermarket. It's definitely something that that not a lot of people do. Well, uh, but, but actually, no. I guess that's not true because you've got Gunther Works and Singer and and all these companies that exactly. it's just not an individual person doing exactly. it. Exactly, exactly. 
And everybody, like, when you're first at something, everybody thinks you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. So what we were doing back then was, like, being the first at showing people what the real card numbers were. So did you lose your shit on that car because of the repaint? On the Courage GT? Yeah. I can't even fucking remember what I sold it for. I lost money, but not, like, nothing. I feel like right now, and by the way, every car should be an expression of its past. It shouldn't be an expression of who made it. So in Ferrari, they reward you for buying a car, a 250 GTO that you bought from someone that raced in whatever race and it crashed and they had to repaint it and redo it. And then another mm -hmm. guy took it and they put it on TV and it belonged to, uh, I'm just going to say like whatever fucking name, right? It belonged to uh, uh, Paul Newman. And now therefore it's got to be worth way more money. Sure. That's right. Why the fuck are people thinking that a car is only worth whatever the manufacturer is making it worth? The history of the car should matter. Mm -hmm. And I think if, and, and, and I'm just going to use a dumb example here, but if Shmi bought a Pagani Waira that was crashed, he fixed it. He added a thousand horsepower and then the body, he came up with a brand new type of carbon fiber that's different from everybody else and did something that no one has ever seen. That car should be worth more because of the story point of like how it was made and how it got to be what it is now yeah, yeah. than when it came out of the factory. I mean, I think we're going to get a f potentially a first look at that with Tavares got a flooded P1 and is rebuilding it. So the problem is Tavares will not enjoy and rip the benefits of that because everyone that buys a car from a YouTuber, it's a negative until it sells a second time. Then it's a mega positive. Huh. I don't understand why, but that's something that I've observed through the years where you sell your car. People are like, I don't want to buy Parker's car because he fucking used it. And I saw it on all these videos. Yeah. Yeah. Then it gets to a different person. I want to buy that car because he did all of those things. Yeah. Interesting. It's very strange, but I think it's the long-term game. Yeah, yeah. In 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 these type of cars, like if I would have kept my Carrera GT in, in in pink, and by the way, whoever bought it, painted it white. Really? What was it before? Yellow, silver? No, it was silver. Silver. I bought a regular silver car. He painted it white. Weird. And he painted it white, and huh. it was one of the most gorgeous cars in that ruby stone red. But when I bought ruby stone red. People looked at it like he was gay as fuck, and like yeah, oh. you were ahead of the curve on that one. Then Ruby and now Stone all the red, cars are yeah. Ruby Stone red. Yeah, yeah. And when I asked Porsche, "Can I get a Ruby Stone red car?" They're like, "No, no, no. Anyone can order that except you, sir, because you've <laughs> never helped whatsoever in getting these fucking PTS colors like sold. Like it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. And all of these manufacturers act like mainstream media. They're trying to take all of the power away from the people creating trends because if they're not the ones creating the sure. trends, then what's the value into what they do and what they make? Which as a brand owner and a, uh, having all these different businesses, I get, but it's way cooler to see the people creating the value in your brand and just running, running with it. So how about cars that you thought were dream cars or maybe still are dream cars and then you drove them and you were disappointed like i'll i'll, I'll say there's a couple the sl65 black series one of the, oh! one of the coolest looking cars ever pretty underwhelmed with the way it drove the transmission was kind of lousy it was just more of a gt car it didn't it it doesn't drive how it looks the countach insane looking car felt like i was driving a, a tractor or some sort of snowcat machine in okay. Aspen. And let's see, what's another? Which one was your biggest disappointment in that in that sector? Which one did you get in and you were like, whoa, I was expecting this to be awesome, but my God, it was terrible. Maybe the SL65, because I just loved the way that car looked so much. I thought it was like an ultimate dream car. And okay. Then, yeah, probably that. I mean, the Aventador as well, for people who have seen the Aventador on the internet, and it looks amazing, and it... And it Sounds crazy, but like a first gen Aventador drives like crap. The Aventador aged so poorly and so fast because the Aventador, when it came out, there was not a lot of shit that was that fast. Yeah, yeah. There was not a lot of stuff that like compared. But 
through the Aventadors 10 years, mm -hmm. so much stuff changed and came out. And the Aventador turned out like if I get in, and this is my biggest fear with the Revuelto right now. And that's why I'm not like, ooh, let me get one right away. Yeah. Because the Aventador, looking back, was so shit for what it was that I don't want to fall into the same trap. Sure. Uh, I want to say the, the, the biggest example I have for that is the SLR. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. The SLR was my one of my dream cars along with the Courage GT, obviously the Enzo. Like, uh, basically the last three hyper cars, those were the ones before. And I wanted one so bad. Finally, the economy crashed. I was able to buy one. They were half a million dollars. I bought one for two sixty nine. Wow. An SLR Roadster. Wow. Uh, with like 400 miles on it. Uh -huh. It was beautiful. Fucking gorgeous car. You know what he drove like? I've driven one. It's like a... The SL. The SL from 2004. Yeah. Like the old ones. That's what he drove like. Like if you buy a $10,000 SL, guys, you're driving an SLR. That's what that feels well, the like. The other thing I don't get is that <laughs> it, it had the Mercedes, uh, the McLaren, excuse me, collaboration with it. And it's the least McLaren-esque driving car I've ever experienced in my life. It has no McLaren They're, whatsoever I other than the logo. I think they just had the badge. Yeah. None. None. They were f completely full of shit testing something out. There's nothing McLaren in that car. And I could be totally nothing. wrong. It's it's possible that there's a lot of McLaren influence, but it doesn't, from a handling perspective, a weight perspective, it just doesn't feel like I it. want people to tell us what's wrong about this statement right yeah, now yeah. with the McLaren thing. Because legitimately, other than the badge, I couldn't spot any McLaren Same. whatsoever within the car. Same. It was fucking garbage. Garbage. And again, it's cool to have, and it's a cool car to look at and whatnot. But it, it's just not worth for driving-wise. Like, the Courage GT to me was everything I... The Courage GT was meeting your dream girl. Like, the girl that you... When you were a kid and you were fantasizing about and whatever. And she was even greater and funnier and charming. And way more charming and, and, and like, sweeter and everything. Mm -hmm. It was everything and more. Yeah, yeah. No, it's an incredible car. The Enzo... Fell right in the okay. The Enzo is legendary for everything that he does, but the Enzo, Enzo is not a great car to drive. If you go, I haven't on a, driven one. I, I would like to. I've driven it on the street and on the track. It's way better for the street. Have you driven a five nine nine GTO? No, I've that never I've driven, but I don't know what the Enzo is. Like. I feel Similar. like it was meh. The five nine nine GTO. I got a lot of people saying like it was meh. Which by the Enzo, by 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 the way, the Enzo is kind of like that. Yeah, I liked it. I thought the single clutch was tuned and felt better than any gen aventador and it was a older when you Ferrari, compare it to an aventador that's yeah yeah it's, it's and it it's sounds a better cool car. and it looks incredible yeah another car that i really adored that didn't that doesn't drive as well as it looks and mm -hmm. all that stuff is the sl uh the sls black series however i would buy one because i feel like it's a epic looking car it looks so good epic so good epic but i just it was too stiff it was kind of like the sl65 yeah like it's too stiff it's too hard it's just too much the engine isn't that great the transmission's not that great but there's something about driving those cars that you're like i will say okay the, the transmission i agree with I, I haven't driven a black series but i've driven the normal sls a lot yeah but that engine is pretty great so six point two liter naturally aspirated. It sounds ridiculous. Sounds great and all. I think it's a legendary. No, 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 no. I, in in that sense, I I agree with you. Yeah. But when you're like just cruising around and you're going low speeds, it does like <laughs> and you're like, dude, I'm just getting out of my garage in the morning. Come yeah, the fuck yeah. down. So no, hundred percent. It does have like uh, it's good, it's bad, it's not perfect, but uh, like those. Again, the Pagani to me was, I was expecting something else and it turned out to be something completely different, but the Pagani I liked. Yeah. Uh, I, it, it's just a cool car to drive, but as a whole was very disappointing. Now, again, on my experience back then, right now I would fucking, and whenever that happens, I'll, I'll message Horatio and tell him I'm ready for the crazy stuff and let's go nuts. But it's got to be something artsy. To me, what do you think department. about the Utopia looks wise? It looks incredible. 
Yeah. Oh my God. That's by the way, when the Wire came out, we all looked at the Zonda and we're like, dude, the Zonda looks better than the Wire. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's got a V12, the da, 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 the Zonda's better. The Wire is much better looking than the Zonda now after time has gone by looking wise. And forget about the I up- don't agree. But, but you're hang on, but you're gonna go with the updated ones. Are you gonna go with the regular Zonda before they updated and upgraded sure, sure. them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not talking about a Zonda F now like now think original. about a Wyra upgraded in ten years to whatever the fuck is going like you can't compare. So Wyra to Zonda, Zonda was better looking, Wyra came out, and then one day the Wyra was better looking than the Zonda. And I think the Utopia is kind of like in, in the same boat. Because Horatio can see way ahead as far as designing goes. And later on, it settles in Yeah, all of I've minds. noticed that with car designers. I mean, sometimes it just doesn't hit ever. But there's but certain designs that at first you're like, oh, I don't know. And then you're like, oh, shit. No, they, they know better than you do. Senna. Yeah. Yep. When Absolutely. the Senna came out, everybody was dying laughing. They were like yeah. the Homer Simpson car yeah. with a bubble. I did like it at first. Uh, Me too. But... But it, it, it's grown on me more. Um, another car, I, I still can't decide if I like it, but the, the new generation G80 M3 that with that crazy front end. Oh, like, yeah. You know, like everyone hated I it. I like it. And then now it's getting a little better. I, yeah. I still don't love it, but, but it, it, it grew I like on me. It. I think it's just, it, it looks like a robot. Like more yeah. within times. Now, the whole BMW lineup not my favorite of how everything is designed yeah but i do like that because it's so different from everything else 100 percent. It, it looks like uh i remember <laughs> this is too old for you but i remember when they changed the minivans from being like the ford aerostar to like the new ones with the chrysler voyager uh voyager or voyager <laughs> voyager. <laughs> voyager whatever the fuck they're called those ones, uh-huh. and they made them like round from square. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that BMW is doing that. 100%. And it's like the first one where I'm looking like, oh, wow, this is what everyone's going to go with. But it's going to depend in 10 years if everything did go in that direction or not. Okay, Before I've, I can say that works. I have a theory I'm trying to work through that I can't. There's so many factors. On the way over here, it was torrential downpour. <laughs> We've got crazy rain. Yeah. And in LA, I, the three days. I always see a crazy amount of Teslas just smashed into walls and stuff. And so part of me is like, okay, Tesla's one of the most common cars in the world, uh, especially in California. Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't say the world, but in Southern California, it's ridiculous how many yeah. Teslas there are. So obviously you're going to see more Tesla crashes if there's more Teslas. Yeah. Then there's the element of, oh, are people using autopilot and the autopilot gets blinded by the rain, or whatever. I'm wondering if when you let off the accelerator, the brake regen... That change in the weight balance of the car in a hydroplane situation, if electric cars are worse and more likely to hydroplane because of that brake region. They're also heavier. They're heavier, which is a good thing. Yeah. For not hydroplaning. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. I think it's interesting. So two things. And tires are tiny. Uh, yeah. Tires are tiny. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, uh, two things. You also own a Tesla, mm-hmm. so it's more in your head. So that you gotta add that into the list. Because I feel like it's sketchier in the rain than other sedans I've had. How? See, to me, my experience is completely different. Maybe no it's just the noise that it makes on the undercarriage. Maybe it's just the materials it. that they yeah. used. But yeah, you can hear the water when you get into a near hydroplane situation, and it makes a scary noise under the car. <sighs> that, yeah, yeah. That. That I'm not used to in a E63 or S class or well, the engine won't let you hear any of that shit on those. Like when you when you take a Tesla to the track, it's magical. Yeah, when yeah. you're for the first time just going fast and you just hear the air and you're yeah, like, what yeah, the yeah. fuck? And then you just break and all no, you hear is fair. the brakes. It's pretty wild. Uh, I don't know. Well, number one, we know that Teslas are safer than any other yes. car. And we know this based on that dude that tried to kill his family that had his wife in the co-pilot seat and his daughters in the back and just jumped off a cliff and everybody survived. Yeah, like 300 feet or something. What would you do? Unbelievable. Like, by the way, what a fucking idiot. You try to kill your family and then you failed and we all survived. What do you think's going to happen to you? 
I wouldn't even like try to send my husband to jail. I would just kill him straight up right there. I just I I can picture the situation now. We're driving. I didn't get use your 10x code. And you're like, it's over. <laughs> We're sending it off. The, and I'm like, no, no, code Belen, code Belen, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> that would never happen. No, that I would know. never happen. I don't know. Um, I think, well, number one, safety, they're way better. But it's it's hard for me to be able to tell. Yeah, because there's a lot of factors. I've, I've always said, number one. Electric cars at some point are going to become illegal as to how fast they can accelerate from zero to 60. You think? I I still wholeheartedly believe that's going to happen. It's gotten so gnarly. I don't know how that law why. hasn't already come into but, effect. But hang on. You're already there at 1.9 seconds yeah. in a four-door sedan. At some point, like in the Remak, the Nevera. That acceleration we're, will throw you back. We're so past the point, I feel like. A grandma buys a Tesla Plaid and somehow doesn't know, you know, yes. hasn't hasn't been on the computer recently. Yes. Someone convinced them 100%. and accelerates. I don't know how it's not killing more people. So that's one. I also, and, and that relates to what you're saying. I wonder how that goes with when you're driving on the rain. Mm -hmm. Is that like for inexperienced people, like completely a, a mess? I don't know. I think the traction control on Teslas is it's really, incredible. really good. I, yeah. it, it saved me. I was, when I first got my plaid, I was going to the airport in the morning and in Austin. And there's like a part where I used to drive where I had to go through an S. And as I made the S on the last part of it, I had to make a left turn and go into the freeway. Just like if you caught it perfectly, you could punch it before going straight into the freeway. So I remember going like the first, second, and then I punched it. And this is like, again, the first time I'm driving this thing, going to the airport, a thousand horsepower. And I felt how the car grabbed everything on the ground, including like all the little rocks. Yeah, yeah. And if I would have been in any other car, I would have ended up like, <laughs> the concrete wall is nothing. Like I would have ended up 300 meters away, <laughs> like at that point. And the car just like gripped, kept pushing, not full power, but like got me out of there. And I thought I shouldn't do this. This is crazy, but it's incredible that the car like protected me on that. Yeah. I feel like their torque vectoring, uh, uh, torque vectoring in an electric is way better than in anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Now. And then there's that, but the instant torque could be an issue if you're on the gas quickly or the accelerator pedal. I feel like it also would be easier That's to spin out. That's a factor, out. but it's also a factor what you just brought up at the beginning, which is the regen braking. Yeah. Because when you're going through a turn, and a lot of people don't know this, if you're driving for the first time ever, if you're like, uh, you've, you've never done tr track courses or anything like that, you want to go through turns keeping the same speed. Whenever you're going through a turn and you slow down, the car goes, continues yeah, to go. Yeah. If you go through a turn and accelerate, the car will overshoot it, right? So you want to go through every turn until you have the steering wheel straight. And this is where beginners, whenever uh, whenever you have the steering wheel crossed and it's not straight, you want to keep the same speed. Whenever you have it straight, that's when you can accelerate or brake. But if you brake while you have the car sideways, yeah, yeah. you're going to lose control of the car. And the same thing if you accelerate. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand that. And, and by a lot of people, I mean 99% of people that drive a car do not know those principles. I don't think I see it with my wife. Yeah. Don't tell her I just said this. I really do think there needs to be a more rigorous driving test. Yeah, like a proper one. It's pretty crazy. Not a bullshit one. Like you're going slow and doing yeah, this. Yeah. Like what happens no, if you're like, going fast? No, like defensive you know, driving. They should have you do a, a track day yes. and some like skid pad stuff with water on the ground. and. I completely agree. Yeah. Because no, no one knows what to do when shit hits the fan. No one. No yeah, one. Yeah. It's, we're very lucky that we've been in this forever. And when stuff is happening, we know how to react. And sometimes our brain does work as fast as we think. And we can get out of trouble. But for most people, they have no clue that if you're going at a certain speed and you press the brake, the car is just going to go like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And if you accelerate, it's going to go the other way around. And... Uh, uh, those people are just at the same time going out on the street like us. And that's scary as fuck. 
It's amazing how, especially in LA where it doesn't rain very often. I mean, it's like the apocalypse when it starts raining. Yeah. People are just, it's, it's like people are just accelerating into walls on purpose. And that's what I'm saying, dude, because no one's ever told them. Yeah. You, you cannot break right now. You can't accelerate right yeah, now. Or like, by the way, you can't go 130 in the fast lane with puddles everywhere. What do you, <laughs> what do you think's going to yeah, happen? What are you thinking? It's ridiculous. Yeah. And it happens more often than what we like to think. Speaking of puddles everywhere, how are we doing on time before it becomes two dudes, one porta potty? God damn, I were in 10 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, that's good because I have had way too much water. So you got you got to go puddle something? Yeah, yeah, I got to go. All right. Well, thank you so much, dude. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, setting up the beautiful podcast arena. Thank we you. Might, we, we might need to come up with some more custom... We have to. This is yeah. like where Belen does her podcast, and you can barely tell because Sergio is our our production. Yeah, design he's our manager. designer, and yeah, and yeah. It, it went from there was a lot more books and a lot less car stuff, and now we've got a helmet. Um, and so, Peter Griffin. So true. we Tesla Plaid, the Wyra, yeah, the Oracle jacket, uh, the Oracle hat, and the Starship. Yep, and uh, we also look like we're in my grandmother's living room. It's very formal. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, <laughs> see you guys next video. See you next week. <laughs>